Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum. I welcome you in today's video, which is about the auspicious occasion of Eid Mubahala that falls on 24th Dhul Hijjah and which is encapsulated in the Ayat Mubahala in Quran, Chapter 3, Al Imran, verse 61. So let's begin in the name of Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yisirli amari wahlul uqtatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Let us first understand what mubahala means. Al-mubahala is derived from the Arabic word bahala, which literally means curse. With bahala, being a root verb which means to curse, al-bahal literally means the curse. It is also used to mean scarcity of water. The term mubahala can also mean withdrawing mercy from one who lies or engages in falsehood. In the Quran, al-mubahala, invocation of God's curse, was mentioned as a decisive solution to the dispute over Jesus between the Christians of Najran and Muhammad, peace be upon him. Allah ordered Muhammad, peace be upon him, to call on the Christians to invoke God's curse upon those who are intentionally unjust in their claim in order to determine who was telling the truth. Let us see what Quran says about Mubahala. The Quran's Mubahala verse is a controversial verse due to the debate with Christianity. Praying for God to curse the liar regarding religious disputes is an ancient Arabic tradition. Mubahala was common among Semitic tribes being found in writings that existed prior to Muhammad Wasallam's preaching of Islam. The event of Mubahala is an instance of the Quran's critique of Christians' doctrine, God on earth as Christ, incarnation. From this historical event, Muslims were to continue debating major points of the Christians' faith, with Christians defending and defining their doctrines and practices. Let's look at the historical background of this ayah. In the ninth year of Hijrah, Muhammad, peace be upon him, is reported to have sent a letter to Abd al-Harid ibn al-Qama, the Grand Bishop of Najran, the official representative of the Roman Church in the Hijaz, inviting the people of the area to embrace Islam. In response to that letter, a delegation was sent to Muhammad, peace be upon him. Between 21st and 25th of Dhul Hijjah, the delegation arrived and discussions of religion and theology began, with the subject eventually turning to Jesus, the Messiah, and the question of defining what and who Jesus really is compared to what he is actually understood to be for each party. Muhammad, peace be upon him, preached to them that Jesus is a human being granted revelation by God and requested them to accept Islam. The Christians, however, were not convinced and responded with their explanations of Christ being divine. Because of the Christians' refusal to accept Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's observations about the incorrect beliefs of Christianity and the logical explanations proving the incorrectness of their beliefs of Jesus' divinity as the Son of God. And after being unable to resolve the conflict over who Jesus is, the verse of Mubahala was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's look at Ayat -e Mubahala, Ayat number 61. From Surah Al-Imran, Surah number 3. 
Tell whoever disputes with you on this matter after true knowledge has come to you. Come, let us summon our sons and your sons and our women and your women and ourselves and yourselves and then let us pray together and invoke the curse of Allah on those who lie. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam recited verse 61 of Al Imran to the Christians, and unto him who disputed with thee therein after the knowledge had come unto thee. Say, O Muhammad, unto them, Come ye, let us summon our sons, and ye summon your sons, and we summon our women, and ye your women, and we summon ourselves, and then let us invoke the curse of God on the liars. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, recited this ayah and invited them for Mubahala praying to God subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy and banish the liars. Mubahala became necessary since the Christian delegation was adamant to not accept the truth. After some hesitations, the delegations asked to be given one day to reconsider their options and then accepted to have the Mubahala after two days. Whom did the Prophet, peace be upon him, take with him? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, selected a place close to Medina for the Mubahala, which was then cleaned and prepared by Hazrat Salman Farisi, Radiallahu, and the next day the Christian delegation reached the designated place. A number of Mujahideen and Ansar also gathered at the site. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, took with him Imam Hassan alayhi salam, Imam Hussain alayhi salam, Bibi Fatima alayhi salam, and Imam Ali alayhi salam, and headed towards the site in a manner that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was leading the group, holding Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain, and Bibi Fatima bint Muhammad was behind the Prophet, followed by Imam Ali alayhi salam. Saad bin Abi Waqas relates that when the ayat mubahala was sent down, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him called Imam Ali, Bibi Fatima, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain and said, O oh my Allah, these are my Ahlul Bayt. This hadith has been recorded in Sahih Muslim, Volume 2, page 287. The Christians returned to the place they were staying. Their leader, Al Sayyid Al Aqib, advised them, saying that if tomorrow Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, brings his companions and his tribesmen and military might with him for Mubahila, then they should accept the challenge without fear. But if he brings only the members of his family, then never accept the challenge, for he is not going to put forward his family in danger unless he is truthful. When the Christian delegations saw a woman, two children, and only one man with the Prophet, peace be upon him, they got scared and worried. 
Abu Harisa said, Oh my Christian friends, I am seeing such bright faces that if they pray that God moves this mountain from its place, then the mountain will be moved. I warn you, do not have Mubahala with them or you all will be destroyed and banished. The Christian delegation was still amazed and frightened when the brother of Abu Harisa, Karz ibn al-Akama, stated, O oh my fellows, it appears that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the same last apostle and prophet that has been mentioned in our sacred books. We should not have Mubahala with them, because anyone who had Mubahala with the prophets in the past as well were destroyed. Look around you and observe that the signs of your destruction are appearing. When they looked around, they observed that the entire atmosphere had changed and it appeared that a furious storm is in offing. Witnessing this, they backed off from the contest and requested that their friendship be accepted. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, accepted the request and asked Imam Ali salam to write the agreement according to which they, Najran tribes, accepted to pay jizya and live under the protection of the Muslims. This victory is a unique one in the history of this world. Few points to take home. The seriousness of the occasion demanded absolute purity, physical as well as spiritual, to take part in the fateful event. Only the best of Allah's creation was selected by the Holy Prophet under Allah's guidance. It's beyond all doubts established the purity, the truthfulness and the sublime position of the Ahlul Bayt. It also unquestionably confirmed as to who were the members of the family of the Holy Prophet. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانَ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَسَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ عَلَى رَسُولِ الْكَرِيمِ اللهم سلي على محمد وعال محمد Thank you. Please do subscribe to my channel like, share, comment and don't forget to click the bell icon for notification of new videos. Jazakallah khair.